Do you have a vision for the future? Have you ever had a passion to do something new or different? What happened to it? Did you attempt it or did you talk yourself out of it? Where does vision come from? Sure, it can come from our own selfish desires, but it could also come from God. So how do you know where the idea came from and what you should do about it? When God wants something significant done for his kingdom, how do you think he communicates the task to man? Sure, he has sent messenger angels to deliver the message, but that's pretty rare, and I don't think you should spend a lot of time waiting for one. Usually, he puts the idea or vision for the task into someone's mind and waits to see their response. If they say no, he gives the vision to someone else. So when we get a bold and exciting new idea, how do we know if it's our own thought or God's assignment that is waiting for our response? We all know people who thought they had a vision from God and after rushing into it against the advice of friends, met with disaster. On the other hand, there are people who have accomplished incredible things for God with very unusual ideas. Let's look at a man in the Bible who had a big vision. He had a very prestigious and comfortable occupation. He didn't need any changes, but when God gave him a vision, it changed everything. Let's look at Nehemiah. He worked for the king of Persia. When he heard about the condition of Jerusalem and his homeland, he was very upset. God planted a vision in his heart to do something about his country. Realistically though, what could one man do? But when Nehemiah shared his vision with the king, suddenly there was an open door of opportunity and resources to match the vision. He walked through that door and rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem in record time. So what can we learn from Nehemiah? When you feel a stirring in your heart to do something, it could be God. You then have a choice to ignore it or pursue it. Nehemiah didn't just move to Jerusalem and pick up a shovel. He talked it over with someone wise and experienced, the king. God used the king to confirm the vision and provide the resources to carry it out. When we get a new idea, first talk it over with wise and trusted friends. God can use them to confirm the vision and help you get started. They can also help you dispose of an unwise plan. Was it clear sailing after that for Nehemiah? No, there were many problems and setbacks, but because he knew the vision was from God, he persisted with God's help and was successful. Hitting obstacles does not mean the vision isn't from God. They can be character building events that God uses to strengthen you. What is the biggest factor that holds you back from accomplishing God's vision for your life. Fear. We're all afraid of change and no one likes taking risks and no one wants to make an embarrassing mistake. What determines your ability to embrace change for the future? It's your past. If you grew up in a fearful home where risks and challenges were avoided, then it'll be very hard for you to act on a God-given vision. If you believe lies about yourself that tell you you're stupid and a failure, then you'll avoid anything new or different. Counselors can help you deal with your past and those lies so you can get on with a God-directed future. Here is the best way to deal with fear of a new vision. Listen to what God told Joshua. In Joshua 1 and 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. If God has called you, He will give you the strength and ability to complete the vision. Remember, God wants you to be emotionally free. I'm Grant Mullen.